Hey everyone, QB King 77 here, here to do a video doing a full review of the CyanogenMod 10 ROM on your Samsung Epic 4G, yes, the original one with a keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead, I do have a video showing you how to install this ROM, I can go ahead and link to that in the description of the video. This is actually the nightly build from September 11th, so kind of keep that in mind. I do talk about nightlies and such in my how-to video, so definitely be sure to check that out. Uh, but right away, let's go ahead and check it out. First of all, I do wanna go to settings, scroll down, go to about phone, and of course, Android version 4.1.1, Jelly Bean right there, we are on Jelly Bean. Uh, you'll see signage mod version, letting you know it is CM10 as well. Uh, it'll let you know the build date as well, whichever one that you do decide to install. Otherwise though, um, it is actually surprisingly smooth to be honest. Everything has been running very well. Um, I haven't had really any issues going through downloading different things. You'll see, uh, of course, with Jelly Bean, you do have that nice pinch notification option where you can expand notifications. You can contract them as well. Um, I actually went ahead and swiped one away in a bit. Uh, but yeah, you can swipe away notifications that you do not want to see. You'll see it'll go away. Up at the top, you do see you do have uh, notification panel options with some shortcuts, letting you know you can turn on and off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS. You can actually edit these. I will get to that in a second, uh, but that's pretty cool that you can edit them. Up at the top, you'll see everything looks different on Jelly Bean with the time, the date, and you have a settings button to take you directly into settings. Down at the bottom, you see you have sprints and just a little uh, blue bar that lights up when you select it. So overall, uh, very cool there. You do also have an updated or different lock screen. So you will see, um, looks pretty standard ice cream sandwich. You got unlock and camera, but you can also go up to go to Google Now. I will get to Google Now in just a bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and go to settings first. Also, real quick, with notifications, um, if you do have a certain setting you wanna go to, hop to, uh, so let's say I wanna go to my Wi-Fi settings, I can press and hold on Wi-Fi, and you will see it'll go straight into my Wi-Fi settings. So that's a little quick tip for you there. Otherwise, go into settings, and let's go ahead and check out some of the options. So you have some launcher options, uh, where you can change some home screen, you can uncheck search bar if you don't want that there. You have some drawer settings as well, and you can auto-rotate the home screen as well. Uh, otherwise though, you have lock screen settings where uh, you can change the security background. You can have battery status always on, so which is something I like, so it'll let you know what your battery status is at. Uh, you can have weather turn on as well. And here you can go to slider shortcuts and you have a couple open spots to put shortcuts. So let's say I wanted to put a shortcut there, I swipe up. So I want to put an application. I can go ahead and select whichever application I want. So if I want the messaging application, I can select it. Just go ahead and hit OK, hit the Save button. And then when I go ahead and go to my lock screen now, you will notice that there's a shortcut to the messaging application. So that's one of the coolest things about Synergy Mod 10 that you can edit that lock screen. You have theme options as well. You can just go ahead and go to the Play Store and search for CM10 and it will come up with various themes that you can apply, which is very cool. You also have some system settings, which is where you can edit these notification options. You also have some status bar settings where you can have the clock shut off. You can change your battery status style from icon to percentage. So it basically gives you the percentage up there along with hidden. You can hide it as well. Um, you can also change the signal status dial from icon to text if you prefer that as well. Otherwise, notification drawer settings, this is where you can change those power widgets. You can change which buttons show up. So let's say you wanted the airplane mode to show up, brightness to show up, um, mobile data to show up, and that's it. So let's say you wanted all of those to show up. When you go ahead and pull down, you will see they do all show up. They are scrollable if you select a lot of them. You'll see you can scroll through. You have a flashlight one as well, which will turn on the torch. So you'll see my LED light did turn on once I selected it. You can change the order of them as well. So let's say you want a torch to be up at the top. You can move that up at the top and you'll see right away it gets moved right in front of Wi-Fi and it is up at the top. Otherwise, though, you have other various settings. You can uh, just change the wallpaper, font size, power menu. So when you press and hold the power button, this would be the power menu. You, you can edit what shows up, reboot, screenshot, and profile switcher as well. Hardware keys, you can enable custom actions, uh, which if you press and hold on certain buttons and such, you can modify it to do certain things. Uh, when you press and hold the home button, it will actually take you to that recent running apps list. So if I open up, various applications such as the dialer, messaging as well, and I press and hold the home button, you'll see you can scroll through a list of various applications you can 
basically quickly go through and multitask. It, it does work very well. You'll see opening applications got that nice jelly bean animation. My number is not on my uh, Epic at the moment, so I can't really send a text, but 466453, hey. So if I wanted to send hey, it's gonna fail, but uh, you will notice that a very nice stock AOSP messaging application as well, of course. You do also have Google Now, which is what I wanna get to, of course, so I can actually press the settings button down here, or there's that search bar that you can select, and it should open up Google Now for us, which it did. So it brings us to this Discover Google Now, um, and obviously you can run through. It is working. You'll see message not sent, letting me know that, of course, it did not send properly. I am tethering to my Galaxy S3 at the moment, which is how I'm getting Wi-Fi. So you'll see card show up, letting me know how far it is to my house, letting me know the White Sox won yesterday, and letting me know what the weather is in my current location. So very cool. Um, Awesome Google Now features. If I want to know the weather in a different place, I can go ahead and ask. What's the weather like in Phoenix, Arizona? It's 79 degrees and overcast in Phoenix. There you go. So uh, you'll see Google Now does work great. You got those voice responses. You can scroll down, have other options, go, go through and find a different weather options so very nice uh google now working great it's it's kind of funny to see jelly bean running on the epic 4g of course samsung's going to be like oh it's not uh it's not of high enough caliber device to run jelly bean yet our awesome developers got everything going so uh very cool go to the browser you do have of course the stock browser it'll go ahead and automatically sign into your accounts and various things so it should load up google.com very nice loads up great so one thing I did get a question to about was to run a quick quadrant benchmark on C, uh, CM10. So I guess I can go ahead and do that. I, for one, do not uh, put a lot of faith into benchmarks. I prefer real-world performance as opposed to benchmarks. Um, everything has been very quick and smooth. Um, not no, not too many issues whatsoever on this. Um, I don't know of any bugs. Uh, to be honest, you're going to run into minor bugs here and there, just small ones, but things, all the major things should be working just fine, so um, you really don't have to worry about that. Otherwise, though, I should, can go ahead and let Quadrant go ahead and download, and then I will be back. All right, so Quadrant Standard went ahead and downloaded and opened it on up and hit OK, and we can run a full benchmark on it. Just something that uh, I got a request to do just to see um, how it works on the Epic 4G just because it's such an older device. It's over, what, two years old? And uh, you'll see it is on the latest operating system of Android, which is great. It's really, I'm sure you guys don't really want to watch this, so I'm going to go ahead and skip through just this basic thing, and then I will show you guys the more graphical features of it, and then obviously show you the final score. All right, so you'll see running through the hallway here, about 28 frames per second at the moment. Jumps up, of course, when we get to this. It's more graphical intensive, but I haven't seen any stuttering or lag. So overall, looks very nice. Um, I like to see what the planets do look like. Uh, usually you'll get a little bit of a glitch there, but I don't see any at all, about 56 frames per second. So overall, a uh, nice job with that. Um, it's handling it very well. Haven't had any issues with this. All right, so benchmark results. Let's go ahead and check out what the final score is. And it looks like 1181. So there you have it. That would be the, the score of the Epic 4G on CM10. No big deal. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big guy running benchmarks, but that's what the final score was. So um, overall, that's just about it. Everything I wanted to cover. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary in the app drawer. You do have super user. It is pre-rooted, of course. You have the Apollo music application, which is the CM10 CM music application where you can run through, swipe through songs, artists, albums, etc. Camera does work great. Um, it focuses very well. So if I want to take a quick picture of my laptop, focus, quickly snap a picture and then it takes it. So there you go, you can swipe from the right to review the image you just took. I don't know why it's coming up gray. It shouldn't, uh, but there you go. So uh, maybe swiping to the right within the camera application is a bug. So you'll see you will run into small things like this. Camera does work though, the picture did save. I'm sure it saved properly, but uh, you'll see ga gallery isn't responding. Do you wanna close it? Hit yes. But I'm sure I can go back into the gallery and view that image and I can. So you'll see the camera works um, if you load it up here. It does work, it's just 
you might run into small bugs like that. So that's a good example of the kind of bugs you could potentially run into. If you want to take a screenshot, press and hold volume down and power button at the same time. It'll take a quick screenshot. Uh, saving a screenshot, it'll save it. You'll notice it will give you a quick preview of the image. This is what a uh, picture message would look like. It would give you a pr quick preview. You can also pinch in and get rid of it as well. You can also go into the messaging application. I believe there should be a setting to um, turn on quick reply where you can, in the notification, if you get a text message, you can hit quick reply. So you can hit enable quick message and then it'll basically pop up a quick reply in the setting. So that's actually another cool CM feature there within the messaging application. Other than that though, that's just about everything I wanted to cover. Definitely let me know what you think. Be sure to leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.